If you're having a hard time getting your two hands to play more independently of each other, today's tutorial is for you. I often get asked about two-handed independence or basically how to get your two hands to play together when they're playing different material. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use improvisation to improve your two-handed coordination. Stick around and watch. thing to understand about two-handed independence is that it's not really two-handed independence. It's actually coordination. The two hands may physically be separate from each other, but they are indeed sharing a single brain. The same when you're singing. While you may feel that your hands and your voice are separate, they're actually being controlled by the same information center. So there really isn't an independence going on at all. The biggest mistake that I see people making is practicing the left hand part a bunch until it goes on autopilot. And then they just add the right hand in, expecting that once the right hand starts, the left hand will somehow keep going. I also see this issue a lot with singers who spend a ton of time practicing the piano and the voice part separately. And somehow by doing that, when they put them together, they will magically synchronize. That's a big nope. Remember, this is coordination that we're talking about, which actually means you have to spend a lot of time working with all of the components combined. The step that actually needs to take place is that the right hand needs to be added more gradually in a simplified way. And by learning that simplified version, you allow the brain to intersect what the hands are doing. And once that happens, you can gradually make the patterns more complex. So if you're playing classical music, there are a whole bunch of different ways to negotiate this left hand and right hand um, coordination. But for this particular video, I'm going to focus on when you're living in more of an improvised space, as if you're faking um, or you're playing jazz or you're just improvising or playing pop or rock on the piano. All right. So the way that I like to help people to develop the concept of coordination in a non-specific way is to create maybe a two or four bar cell to work with rather than an entire song or an entire piece of music. And so what we're going to do is simplify the amount of material that our brains have to process. So here is a great method to work through this. And before I get into it, I, I just want to reiterate, as I do in like almost all of my videos, this process takes time. Uh, spoiler alert, <laughs> you have to actually work on this in order for it to work. Okay, I know it's not the most sexy description of it. Um, people want a, a quick, easy fix. But what I'm going to say about this methodology is it's actually going to work. If you practice it a little bit every day, five or ten minutes every day, in a period of maybe a couple of weeks, you'll be able to markedly improve your coordination at the piano. So the best possible scenario for this is that you practice each step until you achieve mastery before you move on to another step. So 10, 15 minutes a day max and just be patient with it. It takes time. So let me get into the process. So for our purposes of developing more of a generalized hand coordination, I'm going to take you through um, a little improvisation exercise that's going to really help to develop that coordination. And this is going to be super helpful for you, whether you're playing bass lines in the left hand and rhythmic figures as if you're a jazz pianist or playing pop or rock music. But this is also going to help you in any arena where you're doing any kind of faking or just trying to develop generalized um, coordination between the two hands, coordination or you could call it independence. So in order to build up your two hand coordination or independence, if you want to call it that, I've created a little four bar cell uh, of left hand material and it's, it's got a little bit of maybe a, a Latin feel to it. And it's uh, it, the left hand combines a little bit of bass material and a little bit of harmonic material. All right. And so my left hand in this case is going to be the fixed point. 
This is going to be the thing that repeats. This is an ostinato, you could call it. And my right hand is going to be improvising. That's how the structure of this is going to work. Obviously, once you've gotten this protocol together, you can use it in any kind of um, combination that you like, but I just want to show you the protocol. So I've created this, this pretty little four bar cell in G minor that I'm going to use to show you how to develop this two-handed uh, coordination. So the pattern goes like this. isn't to just practice the left hand a whole bunch and then the right hand a whole bunch and then hope the two things come together. Our idea, what we really need to do is to get the left hand part or the more complicated part, which in this example will be the left hand, and the repeated part, get it repeating and repeating and repeating. And then instead of trying to get the right hand to do all of the stuff it's going to do, we simplify it. We simplify it down as much as we can so that we can get the two hands working together. And once we have sort of the first level of um, coordination done, then we make the second hand more complicated and more complicated until it becomes free. So we're taking really a tiered approach to this. How can I make simplify it enough so that I can play both hands together and then I slowly make the right hand more difficult? So the first goal is to make sure whatever the fixed um, material is, in this case the ostinato, um, that you're going to keep this going and practice it until you can really, really play it without a lot of effort. So I played it through a couple of times. I have practiced this before. I've filmed this. And you're just going to play it until your left hand has it. Okay, make sure that it's accurate. And this would be a great time to add the metronome to make sure that you are indeed staying in time. All right, so the next thing is we need to add the right hand. And the mistake that most people say is, well, now I'm going to improvise. And then the whole thing comes apart. So we're going to ease our way into it. I am going to improvise using only whole notes, literally only whole notes. All right. And this is going to give my right hand a chance to start to play something while my left hand is going on. So if I started just improvising, the whole thing would come apart. This is our way to ease into it. So let's give it a try. One, two, three, four. chance to get my two hands playing together and I'm just easing my right hand into the whole concept. All right. So now I'm going to continue with the left hand going and I'm going to now improvise using two half notes. All right. One, two, three, four. harder um, to keep the left hand going and the right hand only playing half notes because again because the left hand is somewhat busy and I did this deliberately uh, I made the left hand a little bit busy and so it really forces my my right hand to be very very clear about where they're happening and now I'm starting to get a sense for how the ha two hands are working together the left hand has more movement and uh, some syncopation in it 
my right hand is just playing half notes. So I'm really nailing the time down. So next we're going to move on to, I'm going to improvise in my right hand playing quarter notes while this left hand pattern continues. All right, one, two, three, four. tricky on its own as well to get the right hand moving more and also to try to think a little bit about how do I make it smooth you know once you get past the initial just being able to get it done then you start to think a little bit more musically about it all right so as you guessed it now I'm going to make the rhythms more dense and I'm going to play eighth notes in the right hand while I keep this pattern going in the left hand two and three and four and <laughs> combination of some repeated notes and I just moved around in the right hand a little bit and so that's adding turning into eighth notes. So now that we've played strings of the same rhythms over and over again we're now going to start to create little rhythm cells and so I'm going to create little one bar rhythm cells that my right hand is going to repeat over and over and so for the first example I'm using a quarter note two eighth notes and a quarter note. So it's gonna go one, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. And I'm gonna repeat that over and over in my right hand while my left hand continues. that I made, um, which means that this would be a great thing for me to practice later. So the next one that I've created is an eighth rest followed by five eighth notes followed by a rest. So it's going to go one and two and three and rest. 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 Okay, so I may stumble on this one. This is fun. felt a little robotic but as I practice it it starts to smooth out and for you as well as you're practicing this as it starts to gel more you can start to ask for a little bit more out of both of your hands so you can start to be a little bit more deliberate about your phrasing or the sound that you're making out of the piano at first you just put the hands together and you just are glad for that 
But then once you've got that settled, you're going to start to request more from yourself to in, in the way of phrasing or timing, any of those kinds of aspects. So I have one more one bar cell here to show you. Um, and this one is a little trickier. Again, I'm not making these super difficult for myself, but I'm creating some kind of rhythmic change. And for yourself, you don't have to use these ones that I've given as examples. You could make a page of these if you wanted to of different single cells. Um, maybe at first the single rhythm cells would be like two quarter notes followed by two rests. That would be a great one. Or maybe you play a quarter rest, um, two quarter notes and a rest. I mean, that would be a great way to, to get started if some of these ones are too complicated. And then you just gradually make them more and more difficult. And if you're somebody who's working on improvising um, these kinds of these kinds of patterns, this would be a great thing for you to do is just fill a notebook paper full of these rhythm ideas. And every time you come up with another ostinato or figure in the left hand, you could go through your list of all your rhythms that you do and gradually make this more difficult. I mean, you could practice this forever. It would be totally fun and, and useful. So let's look at my third example here. It's a quarter rest and eighth rest, and then three eighth notes and a quarter note. So it goes one, two, and three, and four. 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 Okay, so let's see if I can do it. This one I haven't practiced, so this will be fun. Actually, very good. So from this point, you can start to up the challenge. These are one bar rhythm cells. So what if you were to do two bar cells um, and improvise with those? So you could take the first one I showed you and the second one and put those together in a two bar phrase and improvise those. Um, you could also do four bar rhythm cells. That would be really neat and improvise with them. Um, can I just remind you once again that I did say that this entire process takes weeks or months or even years. As you build your confidence and dexterity, you can add additional challenges like dynamics or striving for more melodic lines. You can create a whole bunch of different left hand ostinato patterns, you know, be creative. If you're at a less experienced level at the piano, pick something super easy. You can just pick drones. That's a great way to start. Or you could go, right? Anything that's easy enough to get you started and then you can make them more complex as you go. What I like about this way of improvising is that you're actually being super creative as you're doing it. Um, you'll find yourself getting lost in doing this for a long time because it's so satisfying to play. And as you do this, you're actually building some really useful two-handed coordination. This whole process is so much fun and this is a great way to add something new to your practice routine to help you to work on a problem that so many people have and I'm sure it's something that you've struggled with at some point as well. Now one other note for people who are struggling with this two-handed independence, a lot of times the hang-up is actually that your left hand lacks strength. So if you're looking to build more strength in your left hand, a, a very easy way to do it is to just practice playing melodies in your left hand. So start super easily at first and work your way into more challenging melodies. Something from your fake book would, or any song book that you have laying around would work completely fine. You can also practice impl improvising melodies in your left hand, just very gently, just playing the melodies in your left hand, okay? One word of warning though, is take it slowly. So if your left hand is weak, then you really gradually wanna 
build up that strength, okay? If you go gangbusters, you really do put yourself at risk of injury. So maybe take a minute or two every day and play a couple of melodies in your left hand or improvise a little bit in your left hand and then gradually work it up over time. Now, after you've done this and you want to dig deeper into two-handed independence, to take it a step further, this is really the time where you would start to dig into some classical piano work, okay? The Baroque period would be the ideal era to pull from here as contrapuntal, like multiple interlaced melodies uh, pieces were, were really prevalent at that time. A few different resources here if you want to dig deeper into that. There's the old Warhorse book, um, Easy Classics to Moderns, um, which I'll have a link below. Um, has a variety of pieces with moving left hand parts and this is at a pretty early intermediate level which is a great way to go. Um, Bach is a great person to, to dig from. Little Preludes and Fugues are another not too hard resource, also I'll link below. If you want more of a challenge uh, and you want to really go for it, Bach's two and three part inventions are a really terrific resource. I think every pianist at some point when they get to this level in their playing need to give it a go. They are at times wickedly tricky, but they are well, well worth it. With all of this, you just want to remember that this is a long game that we are playing here. This isn't a quick fix so that you can play a song next week for a, for a performance. This is improvement for all of your skills so that all of your abilities are growing over time. This is something that you'll want to work on and keep as part of your practice routine for a long time, maybe even forever, because as you noticed, I'm still working on this all these years later. Before you dive into it, you should definitely assess how much of this you actually need for your work, all right? I like to keep people very clear on why they're working on things, and there's no point on working on this in a great deal if you don't have the interest or opportunity to use it. So just stick to what is relevant for your music. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you. Please take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications for my channel. If you could like this video and leave a comment while you're at it, it helps to make sure um, that more eyes are getting on my work, so I appreciate it. Tell me if you tried this one out and feel free to ask any questions below as well. I create new tutorials every week and I'm happy to tackle any topics that you are interested in. Also, make sure you check out my website for more free resources and to sign up for my weekly newsletter. Thanks so much for watching.